you love smart people saying dumb things. And, you know, we have a clip um, that uh, that we found, and I know that you forwarded over, but it features you. So we can't necessarily say that it's a smart person saying dumb things because you're a smart pay- you're a smart person, but you're not saying something dumb. You're actually saying something smart. So f- just for today, just for this unique show, we'll just title it we'll just- Smart People Saying Smart Things. Okay. How about that? Let's do it. That works. All right, cool. So roll the clip, Isaac. We get so many pieces of housing data, uh, and I'm, I'm wondering where you think we're going. We're slowing down, and that's something that's actually probably pretty good. There have been people that have been concerned this year about the prices rising too high. We saw what happened 10 years ago, uh, and what we're getting now is home sales declining a bit. Home, home prices are going to flatten out, and probably not decline, but the rate of, of expansion of home prices is going to slow down because the market's being healthy, the buyers are getting fed up with the sellers ever escalating their prices, the inventory is tight, but it's going to begin to loosen up. So I feel pretty good about the fact that whenever you get too close to housing stats uh, and you zoom in too far, you kind of miss the trending. You have to zoom out, and what you see when you zoom out is equilibrium in the market and buyers and sellers behaving in such a way where the negotiation is is fair and legitimate and uh and prices are going to cool off a bit as they probably should that was well, greg on fox hey i i agree with you on that that's a smart pay that's a smart person you saying something very intelligent which doesn't well, happen very so often I want, yeah i want your listeners to understand that we have a sixth sense here on what the housing stats mean and the reason why we harp on it the way i do is because there are a lot of people out there that are misanalyzing a lot of junk analysis that goes on in housing stats and and that clip was on fox back in midsummer i said things like that on your show back in early summer and to bring everybody forward <clears throat> what's been happening all year because this year is a pivot point in the housing market where we're shifting from a pretty extreme seller's market to one that is more even-handed okay and whenever you see shifts of any kind for reasons that i could explain but i don't need to uh, the people in the media have a bent to want to spin everything no matter what it is as a negative and it scares people and i think sometimes it's tied to election time i think it's tied to politics i think it's tied to if it bleeds it leads as kind of a mantra in media but it also spooks people and so for the folks out there that own real estate that want to own real estate it's really nice to have the degree of confidence that i have in the housing market to know that my holdings in real estate which is where most of what i invest in is real estate it's nice to go to bed at night not having any of that nonsense out there ever impact me and it's because i understand it i've been through a few cycles and i have the benefit of being able to see the housing stats that come out today, but actually also to be able to feel the vibe, the the behavioral patterns of the real estate buyers and sellers that are happening today. And so as an example, what I said in that clip was that uh, inventory is gonna start to accumulate, all right? Mm -hmm. It's real simple. What happened over the last couple of years is prices were rising and rising and rising. So I want people to picture a negotiation where the seller is 12 feet tall and the buyer is a little kid, okay? The seller has all the muscle in the negotiation. Yeah. It's a seller's market. The buyers are climbing over each other to get at these houses. The inventory is tight. Why? Because the buyers are buying everything. The inventory is not tight because of some economic problem in the country. The inventory is tight because buyers are confident and they're buying, buying, buying. So picture you know, an aisle in the supermarket. If, you know, if all the Cheerios are gone, it's because Cheerios are popular. right? So you have a lot of buyers who are chasing. Now, eventually... In any free market situation, if the prices are going up and up and up and up, eventually they're going to go up too high. And you're going to get to a point where buyers are not willing to follow any further up that hill. Um, And this year they started calling that an affordability problem, i.e. it's a problem that prices are high because buyers can't afford to buy. Mm -hmm. Now that isn't a problem necessarily. On its face it just is what it is. The prices went too high. Here's what happens next. And it's happening today. And that's why I was able to easily predict it. During the midsummer, you could start to see the buyers were getting fed up. The buyers were less willing to bow and scrape at the feet of the seller, begging that seller to take their offer. The sellers were losing their gumption a little bit. And you could predict that if the buyers start to get standoffish, if the buyers start to get fed up and they cool back a little bit, the sellers have two choices. Either I lower my price 
or my house stays on the market. Mm -hmm. That's usually what happens first. The house stays on the market. I thought I could sell my house in a month. It's been three months. What's going on? That's called inventory accumulating on the market. Okay. So today, uh, the reason why we played this just this morning, Redfin, which is a national online real estate company. I've known their CEO for years. Good guy, Glenn Kelman. Um, headline, Redfin report, housing inventory crunch finally subsides as supply posts first annual gain in nearly three years. So it was predictable that when the buyers say no more, they're not going to buy. What happens when they don't buy? The inventory begins to pile up a little bit. What happens when the inventory piles up? The home sales slow down, which is also happening right now. Mm -hmm. And eventually the home prices cool off because the sellers have two choices, either don't sell or blink lower my prices and accept the offers the buyers are willing to pay me. And that's what's happening now. And that is, by the way, completely healthy. Nothing artificial in this market circumstance right now. It's happening exactly the way it should happen. And the reason I have to harp on it is that every time, like, great example, this Redfin report, that was the headline, inventory crunch finally subsides, that's good, as supply posts the first annual gain, that's good, right? First sentence in the article, September home sales slump, prices post smallest increase since the market bottom in 2012. Now, September home sales slump, prices post smallest increase. Now, the prices went up. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. right. They posted their smallest increase. The smallest like increase. They, I love how they say that. <laughs> right. Like last week, we talked about this new term where I have written on a Scott paper here, the home price growth downturn. We laughed last week about some guy on CNBC talking about the home price growth downturn, which just basically means the home prices didn't grow as much as they did last year. They still grew. And so I, I just want people, it's so important to me for some reason, I don't know why, it's so important to me to defend the honor of the housing market, okay? It had one bad spell 10 years ago. And now everybody seems to want to read negativity in whatever they see. And it's just so much better. It's a better way to live to believe that if you buy a home to live in, it's going to retain its value long term. It's going to grow in value long term. If you buy investment property, it's going to grow in value long term. As long as you keep your eye on the 20 and 30 year horizon, even if there is some kind of a short term blip, it's only that. It's just a blip. Uh, and, and it doesn't help, I think, when people try to take news that is actually good and find a way to spin it bad. And so I just want your list. I want you and I want the show and I want your listeners to know that I have this. OK, I have a grip on it. And when you're hearing madness out there in the media, come back to Power Play to hear what we have to say, because we've been consistently right about this. Um, and it's not genius. It's just experience. Um, and understanding the, the, the typical traditional ebb and flow of a seller and a buyer negotiation at scale. Absolutely. It's the seller and buyer behavior.